Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. From this video onwards, we are starting with the new chapter of the Robbins that is the genetic and pediatric diseases. So first let's start the, with the essence of this chapter. Why we are grouping these two topics that is the genetic diseases and the pediatric diseases and clubbing into one. So let me tell you, these genetic diseases may be responsible for most of the pediatric diseases that are found at the time of birth. So you should, but you should always keep in mind that not all pediatric diseases are of genetic origin and not all genetic diseases manifest in the childhood or the early stage of the life. So you have to keep in mind that most of the pediatric diseases are of genetic origin but not all. So some of the genetic diseases may or may not show its symptoms in the early stages of life or at birth. So that's why we are clubbing these two topics genetic diseases and the pediatric diseases into one. So before we begin, let's talk about some general terms that are given in the Robbins. Then we will proceed further with the development of this chapter and let's see what all we have to study in this chapter. So first of all, we begin with the first phase. So we have divided this cha whole chapter into two phases. First phase we are discussing about the genetic diseases and the second phase we are discussing about the pediatric diseases that is almost related to the genetic diseases for its cause. So we will be starting with the first terms, then we will be discussing the basic introduction, then we will talk in detail about the genetic disease and complete that topic. So for what do you understand the term hereditary? When I use the term hereditary for any of the disease, I will be referring to it or what I mean by it that it will be transmitted from parents to offspring. Okay. So whatever the disease are transferring or it's being transferred from parents to offspring comes under the category of the hereditary disease. So okay, the disease being transferred from parents to offspring comes under the hereditary disease heading and we use the term hereditary disease for all those which have been transferred from parents to offspring. What we understand is congenital. The word itself means present at birth. Present at birth. So what all diseases are present at birth comes under the heading of the congenital disease and we use the term for that. So the hereditary and the congenital terms are now very familiar to you. Now let's proceed with the further development of this topic. How a genetic disease manifests? So for a disease to manifest, so for a disease to manifest, they meet certain factors required. First and the foremost important topic or the factor is the change in the cellular homeostasis. The normal internal and external environment of the cell if it's changing then it will lead to a disease. The so disease manifest it needs change in cellular homeostasis. Okay. For disease to manifest it needs a change in cellular homeostasis. It may be both internal change change in the cytoplasm, change in the nucleus or maybe some change in the external environment. Change in the external environment may be the change in the composition of the extracellular matrix. So for the disease to manifest there must be some change in the cellular homeostasis that may be internal or an external change. And when this cellular homeostasis get disturbed it may due to several stress including change in the structure and function of proteins. Change in structure or function of proteins can lead to the change in the cellular homeostasis. So we have come to know that for disease to manifest change in the cellular homeostasis is responsible and for that we have to change the structure or the function of a protein. This change in structure or function of protein develops due to change in genes. Change in genes or maybe some defect in genes. So we are using the term just change. Okay. So change in gene can lead to a disease to manifest because it is changing the normal function of a cell. So you have to keep in mind how this changes arises, how this changes or alteration in the gene is happening. So you have to keep in mind that changes in gene, changes in gene may be due to some mutations. or some non-mutation causes 
non mutation causes so you, you might be studying the previous chapters or the previous headings with the types of the mutations so mutation mutations may be mutations may be of main types it may be due to change in the single gene point mutation point mutation or it may be due to change in the frame reading frame frame shift mutation or there is some another change that is called the trinucleotide repeat mutation trinucleotide trinucleotide repeat mutation अब इसमें क्या होता है ट्राइन्यूक्लियोटाइड रिपीट म्यूटेशन क्या होता है इसमें कोई पर्टिकुलर सीक्वेंस सपोज ए ए ए इज बीइंग रिपीटेड थ्रू आउट द लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस सो इट विल लीड टू सम चेंजेस इन द फंक्शन ऑफ द जीन दैट द जीन रिप्रेजेंट्स ओके सो सपोज ए इज रिपीटेड ओवर सेवरल बेस पेयर्स सो दैट इज कॉल्ड कम्स अंडर द म्यूटेशन ऑफ ट्राइन्यूक्लियोटाइड रिपीट म्यूटेशन सो म्यूटेशन वी विल डिस्कसिंग इन द सेपरेट हेडिंग्स इन द डिफरेंट वीडियो ओके एंड वॉट सम वॉट मे विथ सम नॉन म्यूटेशन कोजेस डेट मे डू ट्रांसलोकेशन ऑफ जीन्स ट्रांसलोकेशन और मे बी ड्यू टू एम्पलीफिकेशन ऑफ ए सर्टन पार्ट ऑफ ए जीन एम्पलीफिकेशन ऑफ ए सर्टन पार्ट ऑफ जीन और दे मे बी सम अदर फैक्टर्स डेट विल डिस्कसिंग दिस चैप्टर सो जेनेटिक डिजीज मे बी इज ड्यू टू द चेंज इन द जीन और द जेनेटिक कोडिंग ऑफ ए सेल that leads to the change in the structure the function of protein and that will lead to the change in cellular homeostasis and it will lead to the disease to manifest and show its symptoms and that changes in gene may due to some mutation cause or there will may be some non mutation causes as well that is called the translocation or amplification a new thing that we might be encountering here is the trinucleotide repeat mutation that is the repeated presence of a particular trinucleotide for a long over base pair Now, because of all these things that we have studied, we are dividing the genetic disease into several categories. That is called the single gene disorders, chromosomal disorders, multifactorial gene plus environmental effect, and its related defects and the symptoms it manifests. So, single gene disorder is further divided into two. One is called the Mendelian modes, and a second one is called the non-Mendelian. So, the single gene disorders are further divided into two categories. That is called the Mendelian. and second one is called the non mendelian non mendelian chromosomal disorders are further divided into two there may be some change in the structure so that's called the structural chromosomal disorder or may there may be some change in the number and multifactorial genes or the environmental effect are can lead to several other diseases like chronic heart disease diabetes mellitus cleft lip cleft palate etc so genetic diseases we have to study under the following headings so th just only work we have to do in this chapter or in the especially in the first phase of this chapter that is genetic disease is to study about all these headings that we have discussed so we will discuss in detail about all this in the next video so if you like the video Please hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.